At any given time, if you were to ask me what I'm thinking about, it probably has something to do with aircraft or the aerodynamics of flight. Not usually cars, but gas prices these days, am I right? I usually do a lot of brainstorming, problem solving, and just clearing my head while taking long drives in the mountains, but I haven't been doing much of that lately. Mostly because I live in California and we've been experiencing the highest gas prices, well, in history. Unfortunately, the average new electric vehicle is going for $66,000 these days, and I just can't hand over that amount of cash at the moment. So what is a guy to do in these circumstances? My solution was to go to my local Lowe's and to start making aerodynamic upgrades to my car. I drive a Subaru Impreza wagon, which is pretty gutless, but good grief it has great handling. It has created in me what you would call brand loyalty. It is also the perfect car for aerodynamic improvements because it has that big rear end grabbing tons of air and bringing it along for the ride. Let's talk about aerodynamics for a moment so these modifications I'm about to do make more sense. And also so that later in the video we can see where I went wrong and left the door wide open for even greater improvements without spending any more money. For this discussion, talking about drag will be sufficient. As an object passes through the air, it has to displace the air, and that takes energy. In a perfect world, the air would displace laterally only, and come back together at the rear as the object passes through. But air is sticky, kind of like honey, but not as bad. Let's take a look at a pretty ideal shape, an airfoil. As this airfoil passes through the air, some of it sticks to the airfoil, and it has to drag that air along with it. This is called the boundary layer, and it gets thicker the farther along the airfoil that you go, because remember the air is sticky, and that boundary layer is grabbing more air as it passes. So even an ideal shape has some drag, even if it isn't generating any lift. Now cut the back half off of that ideal shape. The air tumbles and turbulates in the low pressure area right behind it. Because it is sticky and grabbing all the air around it, the cross section of air you now have to drag with you went up exponentially. That shape looks quite a bit like the situation regarding my car. There are so many things you can do to make your car more aerodynamic. But the granddaddy of them all is simply to restore that aerodynamic ideal. When I put this modification on the car, I imagined the air passing cleanly around the top, bottom, and sides. Much like the solar-powered race car. That was a mistake, but more on that later. Also, for those of you wondering, I perused the state laws for a few hours and couldn't find anything saying this was illegal, as long as I followed a few simple rules such as having a visible lighted license plate, two rear view mirrors, and visible tail lights. Without going into too much detail, let me show you how I put this together. But before I get into that, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. I never told anybody at Skillshare this until just now, but I was already using their platform when they reached out. The course I was interested in was called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. This is a quality course, taught by the YouTube king of tech himself. The things I learned in this Skillshare course have been put to use many times in my own YouTube journey, and I can't recommend it enough. If you have a specific skill you want to learn, pivot your career like I have, or want to level up at your current job, consider checking out Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. And remember, Skillshare is always ad-free. Now, back to the video. For this project, I needed some 1.5 inch thick insulation foam, duct tape, double sided sticky tape, Gorilla Glue, and Goop. I contoured the bottom sheet to match the bumper as closely as I could, then tacked it in place with double sided sticky tape and finished it up with duct tape. As I went along, I tried to make each sheet of foam continue at the same angle as the part of the car I was attaching it to, to prevent the air from separating if possible. Each panel was contoured and then positioned with duct tape then bonded with Gorilla Glue. To keep this legal, it was important to leave the tail lights exposed. This reduced the amount of drag I could eliminate. Also, it was important to truncate the rearmost part and leave it open so that the license plate would be visible. Of course, it could simply be mounted on the rear as well. Vortex generators were fashioned out of cardboard, painted, and then glued in place on the duct tape using goop. I located them where I thought the air would be most likely about to separate from the surface of the car. Nothing scientific, just best guess. Cardboard wheel covers were also fashioned and put in place with goop. It was important to keep the car looking fresh, so I painted them silver to match the rest of the car. Lastly, I used some leftover LEDs for making my shop channel logo, and those worked out well. I plugged in a battery and had the car looking showroom ready. This is the thing. You can see the battery 
right in there, duct taped into a little recess that I cut out, hooks up there. And then the LED strip runs all the way around. This thing's pretty solid. If I grab onto it, it moves the whole car when I shake it and it feels rock solid. I don't know if the light was necessary to keep visible, but we did anyways. And then we got the cardboard covers and those are gooped in place. Didn't do anything to the front. Cardboard vortex generators here, gooped to the duct tape. I neglected to mention that before construction began, I did a baseline run with the car on the freeway really, really, really early one morning so that I could stay at the 65 mile per hour cruise control speed without any interruptions. Okay, so 182.5 miles. Average temperature was 70, well, it was probably more like 72. And 5.12 gallons. And that's your current price. This equated to 35.6 miles per gallon. I also used the same pump at the same gas station for all the runs in this video to hopefully eliminate differing pump pressure as a variable. Then it was time for the test with the body extension. Same drive, same speed, same everything. On 60 miles, but my estimator is still at 530, which is where it was when I started. So it says I haven't gone anywhere. So apparently, that's accurate I'm getting more efficient and this guy he wants to see what's going on he passed me now he's coming back to see what's going on he's a little curious good times smile buddy here on camera okay so I made it to 83 miles before it went down the first bar on the gas indicator uh, usually I can make it to 60 or 70 so it looks like something's going on uh, not quite as much as I was hoping, but we'll see how it goes. Alright guys, moment of truth. Last time it was 5.12 gallons on pump number 5. 4.503, look at that. This represented a 13.7% increase in efficiency, which was less than what I was hoping for. My buddy Nick Ream, who also has a YouTube channel, suggested I added tufts to the car to better visualize what was going on and to see where there might be room for improvement. I mounted a few cameras to the rear of the car and set out to see what there was to see. The tufts turned out to be really informative. As you can see along the top of the body extension, the tufts are laying flat. This means the air is attached and creating very little drag. The top of the side area is working fairly well too. As you would expect, behind the tail lights the air is going every which direction. That indicates that the air is very turbulent and that area is causing a lot of drag. That was however to be expected and there isn't much that can be done about that. On the lower portion of the sidewalls things also aren't working very well. The bumper tapers pretty aggressively, about 20 degrees, and that may be the problem or it may be the tire itself causing the problem. Either way, major room for improvement. The whopper however was the underside of the extension. The tufts were going every which way, even at the rearmost part. Essentially there wasn't much if any clean air coming from under the car to keep that flow attached on the bottom of the extension. The bottom of my car is pretty exposed. There isn't really a belly pan to speak of to keep the air flowing smoothly, and so all the bumps, nooks, and crannies are grabbing and tumbling the air. Given what I learned from the tufts, I think things could be improved dramatically without spending any more money. To minimize the drag created under the car, I would add a front splitter and sidewalls using foam to keep as much air as possible moving around the car rather than under. The main improvement would come from reshaping the rear extension though. The area between the underside of the extension and the ground is one giant drag creating space since none of the air was flowing cleanly there. By shaping the extension to drop down as low as the side skirts, we could effectively eliminate a huge source of drag. It is my guess that these changes would easily double the efficiency gains that we saw earlier in the video. This car is super practical. I'm not sure why more car manufacturers aren't going this route, but in the meantime, I will continue to enjoy my 13.7% savings per tank of gas while educating random strangers at fuel stations on the basics of aerodynamics. What's in the car backside? It's on the car backside? Yeah. Oh, do you know aerodynamics? Not much though. One mind at a time. Okay. 